Tonight, we look at the new and improved Springfield TRP. We talk about the color brown, and my hands feel the wrath of 20 LPI. It's all happening now on the 1911 Syndicate. This is my Springfield TRP. It's a gun that's been around for decades, and we finally had it on the channel last year as our nominee for best 1911 under two grand. And while a classic, we could look at the TRP and think, yeah, there's a certain amount of updating that it could use much like if you were to walk into a house from the 1980s and you can see, hey, it's got good bones, it's got good character, but the carpeted bathroom and the pink jacuzzi, yeah, they could use an update. Recently, Springfield released this, the newly updated TRP. And the first thing you might notice is, what's well, brown? Now we all know that any brown gun immediately rises a couple points in the cool scale, but I will not be blinded by the fantastic brown because there's more important things to talk about. Like, does it even work? Uh, how's the trigger? Uh, how's the recoil? Is it good value? But yeah, the brown's pretty cool. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, uh, Springfield did send us the gun for the review so you guys can know that going in. I will actually tell you guys that they're probably one of the best at completely staying out of your way and not being involved in the process. And all that to be said, I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say about the gun today. A lot of positive things, a couple critical things, but yeah, Springfield sent us the gun. Let's go ahead and move on. And a big thanks to the sponsor of today's video. That would be our friends over at Segara. Segara Gear. They got a new battle wagon. New battle wagon. The difference is, tail is a little bit easier to manipulate, so you can fine adjust it, mm -hmm. right? They also put a layer on top here now that is multicam, multicam aired, couple different colors, and this also has a coating on it that mitigates thermal energy a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty cool. Um, and they like strength test that thing that was like 6,000 pounds 6, or something. 6,000 pounds is That's, what. Okay, so for some of our heftier viewers, okay, no offense, but for those of you pushing around the 6,000 pound threshold, um, hey man, we got you covered. Uh, you can plug in code 1911 syndicate, saves you guys 10% off. They got a bunch of other stuff too. We'll be talking about some uh, upcoming videos. But yeah, check them out, great company. They supported us for a long time, so appreciate the support. So when I first get a new gun in for review, I just kind of have it around me for a couple of days as I work and I'm, you know, working on whatever it is that I'm doing that day. I just kind of have it out, you know, on the kitchen counter. I'm sure the fact that some of my house guests are either alarmed or think is awesome when they come over. But um, when I first got it and I just thought, all right, what do I think of this thing? Visually, it's great. Like it's a really great looking gun. And as much as I don't want to linger on it, I swear you can put Coyote Brown on anything and it just rises a couple points on the cool scale, right? So we do have that. Everything about the TRP is aggressive. And I mean that really as a compliment. This is not meant to be a 1911 that's in the like classic or even though it is a classic but it's like it's not meant to be classic or artistic um you know just a collector's piece it's meant to be shot right i mean it's the tactical response pistol aka you res respond to tactical situations with this pistol in fact we should probably back up and talk a little bit about that the TRP has its roots in the 1980s. It was designed in conjunction with FBI's HRT. So the HRT is the hostage rescue team. You can think of it like the sort of the tier one or special operations component of 
federal law enforcement, aka the FBI, right? So they do hostage rescue and counterterrorism operations, stuff like that. They were stood up in response to the hostage crisis at the Munich Olympic Games. What happened was the Olympics were coming to the US and federal law enforcement wanted a team that was capable of dealing with a situation like that if that were to happen. So HRT puts out a contract for a 1911 that would be their pistol and eventually the Springfield TRP wins. Technically the TRP didn't win. Uh, the professional is the actual model that won the contract, but the TRP is modeled after the professional. So the TRP is meant to mimic the styling and the features of the professional, but in more of a attainable uh, price point. You can still get the actual professional guns from Springfield. Those come from the Springfield Custom Shop. And as a matter of fact, it's actually the only gun that the Springfield Custom Shop currently does. So all the talk of cool looking gun and hostage rescue teams, that really means nothing if the gun doesn't run. So in this section, let's look a little bit about shooting the gun. First thing when it comes to the TRP is you're gonna wanna get yourself some good mags. So I would also note, very nice little case that the gun comes in. I don't think that this is like some influencer special case or anything like that, to be honest with you, but I think that's just the case the thing comes in. So the factory mags, first thing I noticed, so first of all, they're seven rounds, they're not eight round mags. And you'll see the little follower hits the base of the mag. So it's like, okay, the mags aren't off to a great start. Um, you know, no offense to Springfield, but the mags are super underwhelming. So my first bit of advice to you would be, if you're gonna get a good 1911, get some good mags. Uh, these are Wilson Combats. This is the good stuff, you'll pay for them. They're probably 40 bucks, um, but they're also eight rounds instead of seven. So, hey, you pick up an extra round. Okay, let's talk about reliability. So the gun has been very reliable. The only issues I have had have been related to very old beaten up range mags. And those mags were also running uh, reloads from Callaway Ballistics, not tr trying to throw shade, but I've had plenty of issues with their reloads. Um, but if we swap over to, actually in all fairness, these are their reloads. So we'll see how th they work. Um, but these are on the Wilson mags. Just see if it runs just the standard FMJ stuff. Okay, so FMJ is no problem just for fun. We'll throw a few hollow points through. These are PMC, um, like, uh, I don't think it's anything like super defensive oriented, but they are some jacketed hollow points and they have quite a bit more spice on them. But like I said, gun has really been running everything that I have sent down range. Okay, hallmark of any good 1911 is its trigger. It is the best pistol trigger that you can get. Um, and on a gun at this price point, I don't need it to be spectacular, but I would like it to be good. So pretty standard little amount of take up there, very standard 1911 stuff. And the brake is nice. I have to admit, I was really happy with the trigger when it came in. Um, nice reset, right? Very tactile, very positive. Um, and it's, it's good, honestly. I, I would say the trigger is a tad bit better than expected. Another hallmark of the TRP is the grip. So when I say the gun is grippy, I can't emphasize that enough. If you are the kind of man that, man that wears gloves at the gym to do pull-ups, for example, you are not gonna like shooting the TRP because it is very aggressive. The checkering on the front strap, it damn near looks like serrations on the back of like a Rambo knife or something. So that's 20 LPI, AKA lines per inch. Now you will notice when you shoot the gun, um, I'll do this just to kind of illustrate the point here. So when you get done shooting the TRP, your hand after a mag, <laughs> you're gonna be showing that 20 LPI. It's just the nature of the beast. In some weird way, I find it to be part of the charm of the TRP is that it is unapologetically aggressive. And I kind of like that. 
Okay, TRP comes with an ambidextrous safety. I am one of the people in the world that uses that, as so many of you love to point out my lefty genetic flaws. So an ambi safety to me, while for many of you, not really important for me, it's pretty critical actually. And I gotta tell you, it's a good ambi safety. A lot of what I'm looking for when it comes to an ambi safety is, is this side of the safety built out to be more aggressive like a competition rig? Obviously this is not a competition gun, clearly. Um, and then, hey, is it, um, is the safety loose enough on its sort of, you know, fitment that it has a tendency to just kind of want to pop on on its own? And that is not the case with this. It's really nice, positive retention on the safety. That's exactly what I would like. Nice little skinny paddles, which again on a carry gun is good. And then when it comes to the sights, they did a good job on the sights. So these are redesigned compared to the old one. Instead of having that Novak rear st uh, sight style with the slant, um, you've got more of a hook here. That way, if you needed to do, you know, all of your like, you know, belt manipulations and stuff like that, you can do all that. You've got a nice positive ledge there in the rear. And I just set my gun back to safe. So again, all things considered, as a shooting experience, it's pretty pleasant. If you guys are looking for any ways to support the channel, um, you could adopt a dog, right? Or this, whatever this thing is, Coyote. I, I, we have no freaking clue. It keeps showing up on set year after year. Um, YouTube's not been particularly kind to us lately on monetization. Kind of unfortunate because that is a part of how we make money. So, hey, if you're looking for any other ways, Patreon would be a great way you guys can support us. We do have some really cool stuff coming up this year in terms of private classes, but I, you know, can't, can't, can't say too much about that. Um, 1911 Syndicate is also a real estate company, operate pretty much nationwide as long as you have a reasonable request, which is not always the case, um, but you can go to 1911syndicate.com, check that out. Really appreciate the support. We're a small business, as many of you are, so that support means a lot to us. Thanks, on with the video. Okay, so let's talk a little bit on sort of previous gen TRP versus the new gen. So some things are the same, some things have either been changed or added, uh, which is good. So you still have forged frame, slide, and barrel, okay? That was, I think it's actually the case with all Springfield TRPs. Um, it definitely is with the new ones and even the old TRPs, nothing's actually changed there. Um, and that's good. Hey, it's just better quality components versus MIM or cast or, or something like that. So we've got good raw sort of materials being used. Um, for frame, slide, and barrel. On the old one, you will notice that traditional round top slide design, very classic. On the new one, we've got the tri-top, right? AKA we got an angle going here, here, and here. Um, I have no real preference on that. I probably am a tad bit more drawn to a tri-top slide. So I do think that's a nice value. On the new one, we do have, versus the old one, we've got a new top treatment that would be on the top of the slide here. Some say, very much smarter people than me, that that is to reduce glare. So that if I'm pointing this direction and the, and the sun hits the top of this, that I'm not blinded. It's actually a great little case study right now because I'm actually perfectly lined up with that sun. And you know how much that glare is reduced? Zero, but you know how much glare is an actual issue in this scenario? Zero. So I think we should just start saying top treatments are because they look cool. It's increased, um, you know, higher level of uh, machining and they look great. And I'm perfectly fine with that. It doesn't really add any grip texture that's magical or anything. It's just cool. I like it. But hey, the glare, not a big deal. Um, improved sights. That's a big win old versus new. So um, versus just having basically, you know, the Novak, you know, slope sight, we do have this rear ledge that you can use to manipulate your gun and do all kinds of cool stuff on for those of you that like to do that. Um, new grips, they're good. They're extremely aggressive. Obviously, we've got the new color palette. Um, not all of them are in the Coyote. You do have some other options, but when, you know, we knew this was coming out and was like, hey, which one do you guys want to review? I'm like, dude, let's do the, the commander length and the Coyote with the bob cut. I mean, that sounds like a very cool carry gun, right? The original, slight price difference as well. So the original was coming in at 1732. The new one's coming in at 1999. So hey, we can still have it in the conversation of best 1911 under two grand. It's just underneath. I find the price increase to be completely fair. Um, you are getting a lot of good features that have been added to this. So I'm perfectly fine with it. Um, in addition, 
you now have commander length guns, right? Versus before they were just five inch. And in some ways, that's actually where we run into a little bit of a challenge. Okay, so one of the new additions to the TRP lineup is the one that I actually happen to have for the review. So this is the, the carry edition, right? That comes with the carry contour. For those of you that are not super into 1911s, a brief description of what that is. So if you look at a traditional 1911, right? That's what the back of the grip looks like. And in terms of if you were going to carry this, versus the carry edition, you'll notice this little like bobbed cut at the back here. The point of that is so that when you carry it, you kind of round off that, that hard edge there that's gonna be a little bit prone to printing. Is it a huge deal? Not really, but it is one of those nice features that it's just like, and it's just kind of like an iconically cool 1911 thing. So you do get that. That's a value add. The downside, right, is that you lose your magwell. So traditional TRP and even some other, this is not, this is like, you know, kind of more OG, you know, traditional lineup, but you get that magwell on the bottom of the gun. This one, because of that bob cut, you do not, right? And notoriously loading 1911s without a magwell, it's that whole like box into a box scenario where you just have a smaller margin for error. So if you are playing the game that you're in this shootout with your TRP and you're gonna need to do five reloads. Okay, cool, your five reloads in your shootout might be a little bit slower on this. The other thing that's different about the carry edition is that the frame, okay? It's still forged, but it's forged out of aluminum versus steel. And that presents us with sort of a unique little thing that we should talk about. There's no free lunch, right? Anything that you elect to get, right? There's usually like a consequence or something that comes along with that. So by doing the aluminum frame, you cut down on the weight, right? Because again, carry gun, right? You would prefer that to be a little bit lighter. My actual personal carry gun, uh, my Nighthawk Treasurer is on an aluminum frame because I wanted it to be a little bit lighter. So if we take my original TRP, the weight on this gun is 42 ounces. Now, don't you, you don't need to highlight the fact that this is a five inch gun, this is four and a quarter, I got it, but I'm just gonna illustrate a point. So 42 ounces on the TRP standard, no rail on that also, by the way. The weight on the new one is 27.3. So this gun is almost a pound lighter than the standard TRP. And that is pretty significant, especially when you're shooting 45 ACP. Around that um, is a fairly punchy round. You know, it's maybe not the most pleasant round in the world to shoot compared to nine or something like that, but obviously it's designed to serve its purpose. So if we just kind of look at the difference, I don't think I've done this like back to back on these two yet, but if we just shoot the standard TRP back to back with the new carry edition, I do think that we will probably feel the, uh, the difference on these guys. All right, so standard one. So honestly, really nice shooting gun. Like I, I've always been kind of a, have a soft spot for the TRP. That's a really nice, very controllable shooting gun. The carry edition is just gonna have a little bit more, oh no, well, <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone, everything's, yeah, I don't know what that was. So, hey, you know, it's a, li it's a live show, everyone. So sometimes things happen. It's just a snappy gun. And you'll even notice compared to the, the, the original one there versus this, eventually running a whole mag, typically I'll have to readjust my grip because it's just an inherently snappier gun. That's what happens when you take that weight out. So yes, the aluminum's cool, it's cool with the bob cut, but at the same time, you are gonna increase your recoil a little bit.
So yes, this particular variant is a little snappy and probably not the most enjoyable model from the lineup in terms of an actual shooting experience. The good news, however, is I have brought you a solution because there's a model that I believe is being overlooked. So there, they have a four and a quarter non-railed version, okay? So basically it's this, it's the same length and size, but non-railed. And what's notable about that particular one is two things. You wind up, so you wind up losing the little carry cut back there, which to me is, you know, it's like, hey, cool, this is great. You know, I love it, no, no complaint there, but you lose the magwell, right? So if you swap over to the other model that I'm talking about, you lose the little bob cut, but what do you gain? You gain your magwell back, right? So that's a value add. And the other bigger deal to me is that model moves over to a steel frame. And I think that that is gonna be really nice. So the weight on the non-railed version is 35.5 ounces. The weight on mine that we've got for the video is 27.3. So we're talking a fairly substantial weight difference from that model compared to mine. And I really think the addition of those roughly, what is it, eight, eight ounces, someone double check my math, I think the roughly eight ounce weight increase is really gonna lead to a nicer, softer shooting gun. So for you, if you're like, hey, I really value the whole bob cut thing and I want the lighter weight gun. Cool, great, great, you got your answer. If you're like, I'd rather have a gun that's slightly softer shooting with a magwell, and also you gotta keep in mind, right? Everything's trade-offs again. So it's a non-railed version. So you would lose the ability to carry a light on your gun. But do you care about that? Like, are you guys like, I gotta have an X300 on everything? Okay, cool, great. Then you're gonna want that for your carry gun. If you're like, I don't, I don't personally carry a weapon light on my carry gun, so I'm like, the non-rail thing is not a big deal to me. So I would just encourage you, yes, this one is cool, but don't sleep on the non-railed. I think it might kind of be the winner of the lineup. Okay, so one thing we haven't really talked about yet is fit and finish, right? Because for anyone that's into 1911s, fit and finish is going to be sort of a hallmark thing of what you're gonna look at when you get a new 1911. So the Springfield website says that the TRP has, quote, meticulous hand fitting. So let's talk about that a little bit, okay? This is where we have to have an understanding about what we're getting and what we're not getting. The Springfield Custom Shop, who's really, to my understanding, an exclusive job these days, is to make the professional model, AKA like the HRT gun. Um, those probably do have, uh, you know, I, I haven't seen them in person, so I'm not like going on record here. I'm just saying those probably do have a pretty high level of hand fitting, you know, it's just an overall tighter gun. The TRP, I wouldn't describe as meticulous. Meticulous might be a little bit of a stretch. Um, so by comparison, I brought out Actually, a gun that is um, kind of largely based on the HRT gun as well. So this is a um, Alchemy Quantico. They're single stack. They also have this as a, as a double stack. Um, this gun is all hand fit. Uh, I, I know that for sure. And the gun is just tight as hell. Um, and you'll look at little things. We're not going to litigate this too far, but, you know, just little things in terms of like the grip safety is really perfectly blended, you know, so there's no hard edges, you know, everything's nicely beveled, all, all that kind of stuff, right? If we look at the TRP, hey, you are going to have a looser tolerance. You'll, I don't know if you guys can pick it in. I don't know how good these mics are. We might have got chintzy china mics. I don't know. Or if these are good, then you guys can maybe hear a little bit of rattle there. Right? But um, it's not loose. It's not like it's a loose gun, but it's definitely looser than a meticulously hand fit gun. Little things like the grip safety, you're like, yeah, you know, could, could it be blended slightly better? Yeah, it could be. Is it bad? No, it's not. I, I'm actually not really poking that hard here. Now with a slightly looser tolerance, you could make the combat fit argument. Some people like to do that. They're like, oh, you know, we, we make them a little bit looser, just so that they'll do better as they get a little bit fouled up with dirt debris and all that kind of stuff. And it's not that that's entirely incorrect. Like, sure, that could be a valid argument, but some people also use it as an excuse for making a looser gun. So not really taking a position on that. Um, and I'm not really poking too hard at the gun. Um, but to say meticulous hand fitting, it's like, I wouldn't really say that. That's 
that's more, if I'm being honest, of like marketing departments getting involved and they're like, we're going to make it, you know, we're, we're going to really hype it up. It's like, sure, but, you know, in the 1911 world, that also means something. Truth be told, for a $2,000 1911, it's fit about exactly where I would expect it to be fit. Okay, so now we're joined by the big man. Uh, coming in for some uh, sort of final thoughts, bring you some uh, recap of the TRP. So you had your first rounds earlier. First rounds, which, I mean, it, it is a little snappier, which is a point that you highlighted, mm -hmm. right? Sure. To be expected just with size and weight, right? Yeah. Having said that, it shoots like how I would expect a TRP with my limited, you know, couple hundred rounds on a full-size TRP. Sure. Right? Yours and one other. Yeah. Um, other than that, though, aesthetically, beautiful gun. You've... I mean, the brown, like you said, the brown. Isn't it hard it just, to not like? It's hard to like not. It's, it's hard to right? not like the look of that gun. Again, much like you said, you add brown to any gun, it's going to just up the cool points. I swear, right? any manufacturer, it's like, man, sales are struggling. Okay, make an FDE version. Yeah. Sales to the roof. You guys are welcome for that, by the yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. That's a free um, marketing tip right there. I mean, even Christy was like, that gun probably shoots a little bit more accurate just because it's brown. Yeah. And I, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job, Chris. Yeah, yeah, good job so, there, kiddo. Other than that, though, I think, you know, the bob cut's awesome if you want to conceal carry something like that. Sure. It's, it's again, a single stack, so it's thinner, so it's going to conceal easy. I mean, I could hide that gun all day super easy, mm -hmm. right? And even someone your size is not going to struggle to conceal that gun. No, I could carry that. So, yeah. yeah. I, and hell, I, I got a... Uh, we didn't bring it into the, the review, but it's like, I got Roger at QVO to make me a, a CCW holster. Oh, did you? That. Cool. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're so, planning on carrying that then? Um, I don't know. I, you know, truthfully, carrying single stack 45 is a bit of a like, you know, it's 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 slower follow-up shots, yeah. right? It's less capacity. So it's like, I do tend to be a carry a nine guy, yeah. um, but it's like, would I have an issue carrying that? No, I, I'd be comfortable with it. You know, I prefer a dot, that's just me, you know? Yeah. So little yeah. things like that. No, I think overall, Great gun, great option. Um, I'd love to shoot that four and a quarter one too. Yeah, yeah, the steel frame one. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So my thought, like, as I've really, you know, spent some time on this now is if I was building a custom gun, like an actual custom gun from scratch, from a feature set perspective, this has almost every single thing that I would want a custom builder to do on my carry gun. Okay. I'd be like, okay, well, I, you know, like serration, you know, very basic these days, but like serrations, you know, front and back. Okay, cool, check. If I was doing iron sights instead of a dot, I would want basically sights identical to that. Yep. Top treatment would be cool. Okay, great, yeah, give me some aggressive checkering because I really like to get in there. You know, a rail would be great. You're just looking at, you're going, I, I mean, Check feature set wise, this really does everything that I want it to do. I think in terms of what could make that better, I want, <laughs> I want Springfield to make this exact gun on a steel frame. Yeah, I just want a steel frame version of this. Add a little more weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I okay. want to, you know, the one that they're making that we talked about, the four and a quarter non-railed on the steel frame with the magwell. I'm like, hey, that's super cool. Like, if you could just make me a steel frame version of exactly that, that would be amazing. And I would also, it would be phenomenal. I, I don't believe there is going from memory, but if there was a nine mil version of that, yeah. that would be super kick-ass. Yeah. And maybe like, they'd have to do a separate skew, but like a red dot cut slide yeah. of, of that would be really sweet. I think that's kind of mandatory nowadays. Yeah, um, the TRP, be. you know, has this like legacy thing going because of the HRT connection and all that sure. kind of stuff. So it's like, yeah. they get some pass because of that. And also, you know, with the carry gun, it's like, that's probably not going to be a, you know, super long range weapon per se. But, um, you know, I kind of look at it. I've come to the place of, all right, if, if you're out there and you're, you're thinking about getting a TRP, what do you do? What direction do we go? I would say if it's not going to be a carry gun and it's just going to be all purpose, you know, range gun, duty gun, bedside, you know, just a workhorse 1911, I'd get the five inch version of that because okay. that, that's on a steel frame. Yeah. Um, cause the five inch would clearly be you yeah. know, more of a, a duty gun. So like, Hey, I'd probably get exactly that in the five inch. If you're looking for the all purpose workhorse. And if you are looking for the CCW, my gut tells me, unless you're super attached to running a light on your gun, I'd get the non railed version, bump up that weight. I think it's going to shoot a little bit better. I think you get that magwell. It's like you don't get the, 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 the brown. I think it's only in black on that one. So you would have to concede the cool point of yeah. that. Yeah. But I think that's probably your winner right there. Okay. Yeah. Great little gun, man. It's been good. Um, yeah. And so we're going to, you know, start adding this in, in the videos, sort of ending with a final ranking. Um, hmm. And it's funny because me and Chris started talking about this. He's like, 
So like, are you thinking about it in advance? I'm like, I'm just gonna kind of wing it in the moment. Like, okay. what do I feel would be my ranking after having spent quite a bit of time on this now? Uh, I'm gonna give it a solid B. Solid B. You know, a B is, is like, hey, there's things that could be better, but it's good. Okay. I mean, a B by definition is it's good. Are we doing B minus B plus? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So solid I'm, B. I'm a neutral B. Yeah. Okay. That's where I fall. 85. On that. Yeah. Okay. You know, I think the mags could, I think they got a, the, the mags are not good. Unacceptable. Um, just really cheap chintzy mags. Um, and there's some just personal preference things I would change. But I mean, overall, it's like, look, I've enjoyed it. I think it'd be a worthy pickup at the price point. Like, I don't really have much to, to complain about. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. So, Jake, if you are going to carry that, I would also recommend you have concealed carry insurance. Indeed. Their insurance I recommend is firearms legal protection. Yep. Okay. Reason why is they have a couple different packages so you can kind of fit your lifestyle, right? If you're a single bachelor guy. They got a package for you. You're damn right. I'm married. I also travel quite a bit with firearms. So they got a package that covers my wife. Yeah. As well as when I'm in other states that I'm legally allowed to carry in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Our code 1911 saves you about a third off each package, guys. Yep. And there's some other features, Jake, if you want to talk about. Yeah. Unlimited attorney fees, uh, attorney hotline. So like if you, you get a little card, right? I, I keep the card in my wallet. If I'm ever in an altercation or something like that, there's like the hotline number on it. It's like yeah. you call that and you get the attorney on the phone right away. So Good. it's like, you know, these sound like, uh, okay, cool. You know, but it's like. Ah, those are big deals. You yeah. know, those are big deals. So we would encourage you guys, hey, check it out. It's one of those things, better to have it, not need it, than need it, not have it. Correct. So check it out. Appreciate the support. See you guys next time.